parent app. So the JAMP parent app can be found on any of the app stores, iOS or Google Play, and it is free. All you need to do is go into the app store and look for JAMF, J-A-M-F, parent. And when you find it, the icon will look a little like that blue icon in the middle of my screen. So, if you select this, get started, it will ask us to scan a QR code. Now, companion to Jamp Parent is Jamp Student, and Jamp Student can be found on any enrolled student iPad. Now, you need to zoom in a bit, but uh, if I was to bring this a little closer, you will notice that a little book icon there can be seen, and that is the Jamf Student app. It is on all enrolled student devices, and it is what enables this to work. For when we hit Jamf Student, open it up, we have a cogwheel up the corner here. If we hit that cogwheel, you can see, firstly, a user, which in this case is my managed Apple ID test account, then an option to authorize parent. That will create a QR code. This QR code allows the student app to pair with the parent app. It will not work to install the parent app. You must have the parent app installed, then hit scan QR code inside the parent app and hold it up in front of the student device that you wish to pair it to, like this. Now the two are paired and we can start actually using Jamf Parent to manage the student device. These QR codes are generated per device. So the one that you see in this video isn't going to work with uh, helping you manage anything but my test iPad. So please don't. <laughs> uh, in any event, we can now take a look at a couple of the functions of Jamf Parent. So these basic functions here are applied all the time outside of school hours. This isn't always what you want because sometimes you'll want to actually have some flexibility about when, for example, certain apps you want to be unavailable. You might only want uh, during a couple of hours a day or a, a particular place, say at home, them to be able to access certain apps. For example, you might want them between six o'clock in the evening and nine o'clock in the evening only to be able to access the Microsoft uh, suite of apps because that's the time when they should be doing their homework. Well, you can do that. All you need to do is leverage the power of device rules. So we create a rule. So we're going to do it for a day at a time. Now, this allows us to restrict apps by category, but we may not want to just restrict a particular category at a time. Well, it's all well and good to say we don't want entertainment apps between the hours of 11 till 8 in the morning so that they don't stay up under the covers watching something or anything like that, we might want to instead go custom. And what custom will do will allow us to select which apps out of all of the lot that we have here we want restricted. It'll look at what's installed on the student's iPad, and you can then select out of all of these which ones you want restricted. So only the ones that are unticked will be the ones that remain. Uh, so going back to what triggers these, so we have location, motion, day and time, and ad hoc, which just works around the clock. Location requires you to set up a location, which I'll show you in a moment. Motion allow, uses the device's internal sensors to try and figure out if it's moving fast and if it shouldn't you know, allow the person to watch a video or read a book while they're doing that. Um, and day of time is self-explanatory. So remember, this is restriction. So if you want them to be able to access something, then don't tick it here. <laughs> and 
and it will affect outside of school hours. This is so that they aren't inconvenienced in class, naturally. Now, as for locations, creating a location allows you to have a new way of determining whether or not a rule should take effect. For example, it's okay for them to be at uh, John's house or Jane's house, and then they can play magic tiles or what have you, but you don't want that at home. Well, that's fine. You just add the location and then use that as the basis for your rule. For example, I've got Billy's house here, which is just a random location I've chosen in the city. And you can see if the device thinks it's here, it'll enact the rule for that location. If it's not connected to a Wi-Fi network, then this won't be accurate without a cellular connection. Um, it's the limitations that we have when we're dealing with this kind of device. So very basic functions. Screen time does have some aspects that this does not. For example, being able to see uh, usage history, but this still presents a fairly useful and easy to understand tool when it comes to creating layers of what you want to be available to your child. Okay then, I hope that you all uh, found this video helpful. And if you have any questions about what you saw here, you can send an email through to our support uh, email address at John Cotton College of the Arts. And I wish you all a nice day.